Hello, I wanted to talk to you about how to use a basic calculator. So this is the ones that I have in my classroom. It has a cover. Um, you mash the button and you just open it up and you can swing the cover back behind. Uh, it's just a basic calculator. Uh, first I want to talk to you about really how to how to hold it. If you're going to have a calculator you know, you, you either want to hold it in your hand like this, and, you know, you could use your thumb, but the way you have to go around, sometimes you could accidentally hit the wrong key. Um, the best way is, I guess, just to lay it down on the table, um, and you can just mash the keys. You never really want to use, I cleaned this one up. Someone had, if you look right there and right there, so evidently somebody was, was typing the keys with their, their pencil that would uh, damage these keys so you just want to you know not do that and of course if you're trying to use you know uh, your eraser on your pencil a lot of times that could slip and you could get hit the wrong key and things like that so you you just want to have it laying right there in front of you and I'll show you how to turn it on almost all calculators they have an on button they may or may not have an off button uh, so on this calculator of course the on key is right there um, and so you just you just press on and it's it's there the on and the clear button <clears throat> are on the same key are on the yeah on the same key and uh, you have this which is CE which is clear entry and I'll show you that in just a few minutes now for fifth grade math you're really not going to worry too much about this button with the plus or minus that's when you get into middle school you'll deal with negative numbers and positive numbers of course right now all we're dealing with is positive numbers so you really won't need to touch that and of course the percent key and this is a square root key again something that we're not going to be using in fifth grade math so you will recognize that there are some keys that you should recognize or some symbols uh, there's the division multiplication subtraction, addition, and the equal sign or, or total. Um, we really won't be worrying too much about these M keys. These are memory keys. You can add numbers to your memory, memory recall, those kind of things, but we're really not going to worry too much about those. Um, I will tell you when you are adding numbers, uh, the best thing you need to, that you should do is usually get you an estimate. Um, that way you'll know if you may be keyed in wrong. Of course, we've talked about estimation quite a bit in uh, fourth grade and in fifth grade. So, you know, if I had 225 plus 515, of course, what I could do, you know, is come up with an estimate and say that this is 200 and this is 500. And I know that 5 and 2 is 7. So I could say my estimate is about 700. So when I'm going to do addition, it really doesn't matter which number I enter in first. But So I'll just start with the top one. And I hit 2, 2, 5. Of course, you see I'm using my index finger, uh, not a thumb and not a pencil. Plus 515. And then you hit the equal sign and of course my actual number or my actual sum is 740 and you'll see that those are pretty close and that's that's good for a smart estimate so I can trust what I have entered into my calculator of course after I get through with a uh, entering a sum or I come up with things say it was a multi-step problem and then I had to subtract if I had that number a second ago but say it was a multi-step what I could do to make sure in case there's any issues along the way whether it's division multiplication subtraction addition order of operations whatever I'm doing if I want to keep a running total just to make sure I mean what if I hit a wrong key, then I've got to start all the way back over. So I could keep a running total somewhere, say on a piece of paper or a whiteboard. And so uh, say that it was a multi-step and then I had to multiply that 
times 2, I would hit the multiplication sign, 2, and then the equal again, and it would give me my new total, or the product from that number that I just multiplied, and I would have that. So the clear entry button is actually if there if you enter multi-step. Now, unless you really get comfortable with the calculator, I would I would suggest doing two uh, numbers at a time, whether it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, what you know, whatever operation you're going to be doing, and then write down that that product or that sum or the different what whatever operation you're doing, but once you get comfortable with the calculator, say I had 1,000 times 2, and it was multi-step, and, and I was going to do plus 6, and it wasn't a 6, it was a 5 I was supposed to hit. I could hit the CE, the clear entry button, and then hit the plus 5 and then the total uh, or equal, and it would give me that. So that would be for long lists of numbers, whether you had to change operations or not. Once I get through, I just hit clear. And of course, uh, if I have a division problem, that's one thing that I've noticed that some people have trouble with, is if I had... Um, 148 divided by 2. Now, of course, I know my divisibility rules, and if this number, this whole number, ends in a digit that is even, I know that it will equally divide. But what I see a lot of people uh, enter in is when it's like this, they understand that they enter 148 divided by 2 and enter. And of course 74 is the quotient. What I notice is if someone sees a problem that is set up with a standard algorithm like this, they will try to enter the first number they come across or the first digit uh, in either case and what would happen is they enter that digit first then the division sign and then the other number that they have and of course it gives them this you know decimal now when you get into higher math of course you can divide 2 uh, by 148 but for fifth grade math we're not so if you see this make sure that you enter in the dividend first and then the divisor and you will come up with the correct answer now what I needed to show you also was how to find a remainder because sometimes we're not dealing with uh, decimals in in a problem or a word problem and sometimes it, it becomes a little confusing on what to uh, do with a, because the calculator is going to give you a decimal not a remainder so I'm going to show you what you need to do now I'm going to change my division problem to 142 divided by 3. Now if I enter in my calculator of course every time you start and I should have told you this to begin with every time you start with a new problem you want to make sure that you hit the clear key this not the clear entry but the clear key and I, you know, sometimes people hit it twice to make sure that they've they've done that to clear out anything else that was in the calculator, so that you will have just the numbers that you're about to end enter. So I'll type in 142 divided by three. Of course, my divisor is last, and then hit the equal sign, and you see how it gives me this repeating decimal. So what I can do is write down the whole number. Of course, that's what's before the decimal. I could go ahead and write down 47. Now, I can use the calculator to continue this. What I'm going to do to be able to find my remainder 
is I'm going to take 47, the quotient that I got, the whole number quotient, and I'm going to multiply that by 3, the uh, divisor. So if I hit clear, I'll do it twice. If I hit 47 times 3 and hit the equal, it gives me 141. Now I have to take this a little bit further, and now I take my dividend was 142, and I subtract this product that I got by multiplying the quotient and the divisor, and I wind up with my remainder. And that will give me a remainder of 1 in this instance. So it's it looks like it's a little bit more, but if you're going to use the calculator for now anyway, in fifth grade, you know, when you get to even maybe when we do decimals in fifth grade math, you'll be able to continue and, and use that decimal. But for now, even some word problems will, will want to know how much was left over. And so that is how you find the remainder instead of a decimal that the calculator will give you. I hope that I've explained everything that has to do with this calculator. Again, remember some of these keys you may or may not use. Um, you have, you know, here's your decimal right here. So if I wanted to enter, uh, let's say $5.25 plus $6, and of course hit my decimal again, 72 cents, that would give me $11.97. And so that's all the keys that I can think of that you will really need in fifth grade math. If you have any questions, please remember to uh, use the discussion board or, of course, use the contact page on this online learning module. Thank you and have a great day.